Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Sorry, I'm gonna jiggle my camera just a little bit. Looks like it was slightly off. Try to square it to the grid, but sometimes um, it slips a little bit in the in the holder. Okay, so we're on we're on page four, and this is Stamperia's Sir Vagabond Aviator. Now I'm choosing to focus on the woman in the collection. There is um, equal amount of the male. So depending on who you might want to be uh, doing this this album for, you kind of have some options. Let me see if I've got it. I love that one. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I love it. Um, so here's uh, Sir Vagabond and then here's Lady Vagabond. So I'm choosing to focus at least uh, on page four and five on the female version. So this is from the 12 by 12... I gotta look at the back side. The 12 by 12 collection pack. And it's gonna go here. And I chose this as the backdrop because page five it kind of has this, this metal and rivets. So this again is page four and it's build two. So I started from the inside out. I don't always do that, but um, in this uh, with this collection, I really wanted to feature that clock in the center of the book. And that is why. Oops, I should dry fit this. I think it's okay, but yeah. Um, that is why I um, I wanted to start with the clock, and um, I knew the design that I wanted to use was going to use a lot of paper. So um, then I can, you know, after I do four and five, then I can uh, redistribute the paper and start this from a planning perspective. So if you don't think some of those things through early on, what happens is you have a lot of interactive, um, interesting elements front loaded in your book. Uh, so it's just, I just do it that way for planning purposes. I could just as well have set aside the papers and then built it um, at a different time, but it's kind of the same thing, right, as building it. So whether you're reserving it or building it um, up front, you're going to set the paper aside one way or the other. Okay, these two are also from the collection pack. They're cut aparts. I made two cards. These cards are eight by just under six, eight by probably 14 sixteenths or no, 15 sixteenths. So it's just slightly under that. And it's really just based on the cut apart size. Now, normally I cut down to the dark side uh, of the image because this is what was in between the cut aparts. Um, but when I measured it, I thought, oh, I'll go ahead and add that in because then it gets closer to a four inch four by four by six. Okay, now this is also from the uh, 12 by 12 collection pack. And so is this, and you can see uh, it's from this uh, this page. So I used these two uh, for this, and these two will be for the other one. So this one, and I, I did that based on what this design looked like. I wanted the Brooklyn. And on this side, did I get that right? I thought there was, no, yeah. I just liked the way that looked um, when you're looking at them side by side because they are going to open away from each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these to the inside. You can see I've got a magnet. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm kind of in a, I know I always say this, in a rush to get this done because Julie put a blog out and she uh, said that I was working on a collection I'm not working on. <laughs> so I got to get my uh, sort of reprioritize. Um, so next will be, oh, she told me, what was it? Cosmos, something Cosmo. So it's in the blog. She's already stated it, but uh, that'll be next after this. And again, this is Stamperia Sir Vagabond. So it's an older collection. Uh, Vagabond's been around for quite a while. Um, the Aviator is, uh, as far as that line goes, this is one of the newer ones, but still it's been around for a bit. 
comparatively speaking. And I think tomorrow, or I, I don't know, in a couple of days, I think Stamper is going to have another release. I just did a reveal day before yesterday. They're kind of rolling them out at, at a much faster pace. Um, they used to like bundle them and, you know, release three or four at a time. And now they're like coming at us one at a time. It's kind of interesting. So that model's changed quite a bit for us. Alrighty. Beautiful. Okay, again, these cards are roughly eight by four, and then you're going to score them in half and then trim them down to fit the uh, cut apart that you use. And if you're not using a cut apart, just make them four, uh, six by eight. Keep it simple. Pretty, pretty. Okay, now I'm going to add these to this page, like so. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I panicked. I thought it was upside down. Okay, no, they're not. Okay, I want to leave the New York revealed, and down here I want to leave the Brooklyn revealed. So I'm not going to go exactly to the edge. I think I'm going to nudge it up what looks like a half inch. Okay. So we're going to lay these down. And I want to make sure I put, um, you know, enough glue down here because it is a, um, a flap with a magnet. You don't want it lifting up. So don't, uh, don't go too light on the glue. Okay, so I'm using my grid here. And I am up a half inch, and that's the black frame, not not the um, not the cut apart. So I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to line up my grid, and then I'm going to come down a half inch, and that'll be the black part that's a half inch down. And because of the size of these, they're going to sit nicely side by side. Be a little bit generous right there where the magnet is. Okay, this is so easy because you're going flush with the side. And there we go. All right, so those are in. So the other thing I would like to do is add a couple of little elements here that sort of give you some key indicators. Uh, can I? Yeah, that these open. So I've got these two little tabs. These are chipboards. And I've got this way for adventure. And the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So I'm going to kind of futz around with this a little bit and make sure I don't cover that too much. Ooh, I don't want to cover my Brooklyn. So I don't like that shape. So let's go back to the drawing board. See if I can't find something that... I want it to clear this so that when I open this, it doesn't get interference on both sides. So whatever I use, it needs to be about that size. So let me see. I bet, I bet I've got some circles I can use. Yeah, there's lots of these gears in here. Okay, so how about we put this one down here. I'm not crazy about that color. It's pretty bold. It's too big because it's covering up my New York. Could use this. I like that better. This red doesn't do it any do it justice. <clears throat> so I think I'll use this one and this one. And I just want that to stick up just a little bit so you know that that is something you can open up. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink the edges. That'll soften the um the white on it. Hi Nala Nala came to see me. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> she says, hi, guys. Okay, I am using, as always, mahogany from Powder Puff, my favorite. Um, a dark gray would work with this very well as well. Yeah. And then on the 
flip side, I'm going to go ahead and ink the back of these so it's not just this super bright white. So I'm just going to tap it. There, good enough. Maybe. <clears throat> okay. Oops, I already did that. <laughs> already did that too. So I've got ink on one side. Okay, we'll let that dry for a second. And then I kind of like these, but I really don't want to cover up this. I might actually come back and um, do something to make that pop a little bit more. Um, use Nicostella or some something that uh, just makes it pop off the page a little bit more. You know what? I'm not liking that. So what I'm going to do is ink the top two. There, it looks a little more distressed. I think it's not going to stick out so so boldly. Okay. So now, placement. This, this. And this, and this. I kind of like it up here, and, and here's why I'm making that decision. I've got a lot of space up here and very little down here. So I don't, it looks a little crowded, a little, little, get my words out, a little crowded down there. So I'm going to do that. There we go. And it only needs to stick out just a little bit. Okay, and there'll be just enough to get your finger under it and lift it. Okay, let that dry, but I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you. This is page four, and I'll go ahead and pull page five back in so you can see them. Side so, Oh, and see how the ink kind of blends that in so it doesn't look so shockingly white. Okay, so that is page four, and here is our page five. So the center of our book is complete. We'll get this uploaded and we'll get started working on another page. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning in to Scrap and Create. We really appreciate you taking time to come on over and see what we've been working on. And as always, anything you see here on a tutorial is available in our shop. Well, that's not entirely true. Let me let me back that up a little bit. Anything that I'm releasing new. <laughs> so if you go back a couple of years, some of those papers are just no longer available. But if you're watching this within a few months of its release, we have the papers in stock. If we don't, we will reorder those. So make sure when you're on the site, if you see something that's sold out and you're interested in us uh, reordering, make sure you're clicking on that notify me when it's back in stock because that is one of the ways that we know to order more of the paper. Um, we have some automatic refills, but as time goes by, we do less of that and we count more on you guys letting us know that's a collection you're interested in and still want to buy. So thanks again, everyone. We'll see you soon.